NVIDIA's use of tensor cores has sparked quite the interest in the tech community. Now, originally this architecture was debuted by Google, who'd been actually using it in kind of a nonchalant fashion for just over a year in the AI field. Its design makes it especially good at machine learning, analyzing patterns and parallel processing. But what exactly does a tensor core look like? And why is it any more special than a CUDA core or a stream processor? Welcome to Minute Science. One thing's for sure, GPUs have always been good at physics calculations or parallelism, the things you tend to think of when you hear the phrase graphical computation, or at least what you'll probably think of now. But these fancy words are nothing more really than veals over simple mathematical operations that, albeit, amount to billions of calculations per second. Now, most computing tasks are simple additions and products, really nothing more than simple elementary calculations. Things that basic calculators can do almost instantly, but Graphical computing involves matrices, those fancy blocks of numbers that you likely learned in high school. They look like this right here. There are certain methods to solving matrices, most of which involve a series of sums and products. CPUs can handle these workloads, but only in small chunks since only a small number of pipelines exist in the workflow. GPUs instead utilize thousands of CUDA cores in the case of NVIDIA or stream processors in the case of AMD to handle large mathematical workloads, including matrices matrices simultaneously. This is what we refer to as parallelism or parallel processing, by the way. So we have matrices that themselves require addition and multiplication to solve, and then we have entire matrices being added and multiplied together again simultaneously. So these things are adding and multiplying matrices together, and there's also addition and multiplication taking place within each matrix. So this can be a lot of strain on any processor, let alone one with a few cores, and that's why GPUs have their place in the market, especially for things like AI and graphical computation. But what makes a tensor core any different from a traditional GPU core, you ask? Good question. That's why this video exists. The way in which they handle calculations. See, tensor cores are really no different in essence from the way a GPU core is designed. They're just specific in terms of what they do. They handle 4x4 matrix workloads. NVIDIA has an excellent blog outlining the process. They specifically multiply and accumulate using the formula D equals A times B plus C, where all four letters represent 4x4 matrices. Recognize here, where FP16 and FP32 were used. Don't worry, these just stem from the acronym FLOP, which stands for floating point operations per second or per clock, and represents a number of multiplications and additions a GPU can handle in a given time span. This doesn't always translate, by the way, to raw gaming performance. Execution on a software level plays a huge role here, which is why something like Vega 64, despite having an insane amount of floating point precision, because it was hailed as such, falls behind something like a GTX 1080 in in several titles. So optimization, that's its fault, not the graphics card. When you see FP16 and 32 in this blog, know that they're referring to the number of bits per digit represented in the floating point operation. It, you know, it gets really complicated here, but FP16 units are easier to process. They carry less information with them though. It's a trade-off. Tensor cores can handle 64 floating point mixed precision operations per second. Mixed precision in reference to the mix of FP16 and 32 units in the formula we mentioned earlier. I know this is getting really confusing, just bear with me. The FP16 multiply yields a full precision result that is accumulated in FP32 operations with the other products in a given dot product for a 4x4x4 four by four by four matrix multiply. In a nutshell, this jumble of words means that tensor cores are designed for specific operations at the expense of precision. In effect, CUDA cores are still technically more efficient in their current state for many operations. Tensor cores are simply mixed into SMs for when they're needed. It's a bit like placing several college level mathematicians in a room to handle several random operations, along with a couple of students who specialize in one or two specific operations, say long division. The other students could handle the workload, but not as efficiently and quickly as the two specialists whose brains are specifically wired for long division. I don't know, it's kind of a weird analogy, but hopefully you get what a tensor core is doing in essence. And that's why NVIDIA has been pushing tensor cores hard in their machine learning endeavors. They're really good at just a few things, including machine learning and AI applications and that's why things like the Titan V have tensor cores. But should we expect to see tensor cores in conventional consumer grade graphics cards? Don't count on it. Like we just mentioned, these cores are specialists. They handle parallelizing and compute storage operations like true bosses, but 
Traditional GPU cores are still much better at handling most video game code out there. They're often faster and more efficient, which is why they aren't likely to be replaced anytime soon. If you guys like this video, let us know by giving this one a thumbs up. We appreciate it. Thumbs down for the opposite. Click that red subscribe button and the sponsor button if you want to get fancy with it down below. Stay tuned for the next video. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.